feeling good, feeling great Cause I got a big old smile upon my face And you can't take that away mm. Feeling good, feeling great And I know today is going to be my day And you can't take that away You can't take that away, away Welcome back, welcome back. What's up everybody? I'm Brian Keith. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. As always, it's greatly appreciated. If you've already subscribed to the channel, just know I appreciate you. Hey, in today's video, I'm going to share five tips on how to shoot better video with the Nikon D7500. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. It's no secret that the Nikon D7500 is lacking when it comes to video features, but that's to be expected from a photo camera. And also let's keep in mind that this camera is almost four years old. So yeah, it's true that video was an afterthought, but you can still manage to get a great image from this camera with these five tips. Tip number one is super simple, and that's to shoot in the flat picture profile. Simple. Jared Poland is telling you to shoot raw. I'm telling you to shoot flat for video. Shooting in the flat picture profile is the closest you're going to get to shooting in log, like in log. Shooting in the flat picture profile is going to help you preserve more dynamic range. That means more highlights and more shadows, more whites, blacks, then exposure, all that good stuff. Also, understand that when you shoot in the flat picture profile that there's going to be some post processing required to bring the image to its full potential. You'll notice as soon as you switch over to that profile that the image looks uh, washed out and gray. It lacks contrast, saturation, and so you're going to need to add that in in post. So just keep that in mind before you start going crazy with it. Tip number two, ETTR. That means expose to the right. So what you want to do to use this method is you want to expose as much to the right on the histogram without clipping as possible. You wanna capture as much highlight detail as you can in your image as possible without clipping. I think that last part is what throws a lot of people off. It's without clipping. And I like to use this as a general guide on how I expose my image, meaning if I'm exposing for a person, that person becomes exposed to the right as far as I can without clipping any highlights on their face. The benefits of this exposure method is for cleaner shadows and less noise in your image. So expose to the right, ETTR. Tip number three, video autofocus. Now, if we're being 100% honest, we all know the Nikon D7500 does not have any usable continuous autofocus. It is what it is. This camera isn't a Sony, it's not a Fuji, it's not a Canon. So that whole smooth video autofocus, the two ways that I use to acquire focus are one, by autofocusing prior to recording, meaning I will select the subject, focus on it by using the autofocus. Once it locks on, I'll zoom in, check it, make sure. And then as soon as I start recording, I try to keep that same distance away from the subject to keep them in focus. The second way I gain focus is, you guessed it, manual focus. Now it sounds harder than what it is, but it's super easy to do, especially if you have a lens that has a, a bigger focus, um, a focusing, what do you call that? Focusing, understanding the limitations that the Nikon D75 have in this regard will save you for a, a lot of headaches because you're not gonna get that continuous autofocus. But the image is still good though. Tip number four, 
using electronic stabilization. Now, unfortunately, this feature is only in 1080p. So if you planned on using it in 4K, you can just cross that out, but it's all good. We gotta work with what we're given, right? This is great for handheld static shots. That means no panning, no tilting, and also no wide angle lenses. I like to use this for establishing shots where I'm trying to show off the location. You know, there's nothing wrong with a static wide shot. Just holding the camera steady as possible and let the camera do the rest for you. Electronic stabilization, it also works well for close-up shots when camera movement is not involved. So anytime you use this type of stabilization, just remember no movement at all from the camera because as soon as you do, you're gonna get that, that wobbly, jerky looking because the camera is trying to correct your movement. So if you're panning, it's gonna overcompensate for that pan and it's gonna give you that, that wobble or warble, that warped. You know how it looks when you put too much warp stabilization on a, on a clip, it's not gonna look good. So electronic stabilization in 1080p, static handheld clips. It's okay. Static handheld clips. The most important tip of this video is to invest in the proper accessories for video. Invest, invest, invest. If you want the most that you can get out of this camera, you have to invest in these particular accessories. And the first thing is a microphone. The one that I'm holding right here was my very first microphone and man when i tell you the moment i got this how the level of video just jumped from maybe a 40 to an 80 or a 90 and that's solely based on audio because we all know audio is like 80 percent of the video you can have bad footage and great audio and people will watch it but you can't have bad audio and great footage it just doesn't mix the second accessory a video monitor. I made a video on this already. I won't harp on it too long, but a video monitor just to compensate for the lack of video features. More importantly, the video exposure features like we have histogram, you have false color, you know, you have all those different exposure exposure tools at your disposal when you invest into a video monitor. Also, you get a bigger screen. I recently did a video on filters the most important filter that you can have for video is a variable ND filter you're going to need it for those harsh days believe it or not you're going to need it I tried my best not to use one when I first started because I felt like it wasn't necessary I kind of wish I invested in one a long time ago but pretty much any variable filter will do um, a two to five stop is great for shooting in regular harsh conditions so as long as you're not shooting directly at the sun, like you shouldn't do that anyway. But a two to five stop is great for starting. These accessories, it doesn't matter which camera you have, you're gonna need these. People have five and $10,000 cinema cameras and they still have to invest in microphones. They still invest in variable ND filters or ND filters in general. And they still have to invest in video monitors to get all those helpful, useful exposure tools that I was talking about. There's no way around it. Buy it right or buy it twice. If you had to pick which one to get first, get the microphone. Microphone first, video monitor, variable ND filter. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. And as always, I like to ask you guys to subscribe to the channel to help me out. It's greatly appreciated. It's Brian Key. Peace. Feeling good, feeling great Cause I got a big old smile upon my face And you can't take that away mm.